Hello everyone, and a hearty yo jo berg <laughs> My name is Steve, this channel is G.I. Joeberg, and no, I've not lost my mind completely and started digging out these relics. Millennials, they're called VHS tapes. This is a conversation G.I. Joeberg has been itching to have for a long time now about playsets. Playsets, you say? Why do I have VHS cassettes arranged on this table? Well, you see, that's got a lot to do with the fact that as with most things, playsets were something that we sourced ourselves using whatever was available to hand. My family happened to have a lot of these old things lying around, so they became the basic building blocks of any environment I wanted to create. And as you can see before you, I created a maze with this one. But don't worry guys, this isn't going to be a conversation about everyday things like cassette tapes and rocks. Uh, we are going to feature some toys in this episode, and if you'd like to see those toys involved in another G.I. Joeberg adventure like the Atlantis Factor, well, you can. But the bottom line is, if you donate five bucks or more, you get a say in what we do in our next adventure. It could be very down-to-earth options like the 1986 team consisting of guys like Lowlights, Beachhead, Leatherneck, Iceberg, and Sergeant Slaughter, or very far-out options like, uh, I don't know, the Transformers? <laughs> I've got quite a Transformers collection, so I'd love to include them somehow, and don't worry, it will be very tastefully done. It'll really uh, stretch my creative juices. But anyways, that's enough advertisement. Let's talk playsets. And as I said before, we tended to use a lot of imagination and a lot of materials in building playsets because actual playsets were pretty sparse uh, in toy shops, particularly here in South Africa. Larger items like playsets did not typically find their way here. So we were forced to use our imagination perhaps a little bit more than we would have had to if there was more uh, variety to be purchased. And as I said before, cassette tapes were great in creating environments that operated on a sort of a two-dimensional realm, a sort of a maze running. But what if you wanted to build upwards? Well, we moved into the stratosphere of polystyrene. This piece, uh, painted grey, of course, just gives you so many options for rooms. But of course, once again, it operated on a sort of a, a two-dimensional frame. We can start building upwards using polystyrene and then things become a little bit more interesting. Bam! Now we're going to battle to see this all because uh, it just keeps going on and on and on and on. But I'm sure you get the picture. The only limitation was your imagination. And of course, you could put together pieces and form new structures. If I had one of these, and its partner piece, put them side by side, voila! Once again, my imagination just starts to race. And we could stack them to create something altogether new. Of course, they could go side by side and completely enclose themselves. Ugh. Like so. Some pieces just lent themselves to uh, their own thing altogether. Like this piece, I used to use as the front of a gigantic space cruiser because it had this nifty view screen. So this would be cruising through space, connected to other pieces, such as this one. As I say, the options were endless with these building blocks and it thrills me no end to discover my childhood collection of odds and ends, polystyrene pieces. Uh, just on its own, it becomes uh, a bunker with its own sort of top top down entranceway. But the problem with, of course, building these structures was you're dealing with a small action figure. And how does he uh, adequately occupy the space? I mean, say this thing, uh, you know, goes about two meters into the air. Uh, how do you traverse those kind of vertical distances? Well, coming back to the tapes, they could make pretty convincing staircases. 
if you just kept building them like that. But say you don't want something as clunky and difficult to pack away as, a, as these cassette tapes. Well, the miracle of cardboard allows you to put together these, which, uh, you know, you could, you could obviously cut to various sizes to uh, accommodate various distances. And that's pretty neat, wouldn't you say? Uh, and that's a basic approach to traversing uh, vertical, vertical distances. But then if you wanted something a little bit more interesting, well, take a look at this. Ah, mm, where are you? Ah, huh? How cool is that? I mean, nowadays that I'm exposed to extremely proficient customizers, uh, this stuff seems very rudimentary. But to a 8 to 12 year old me, this was perfectly adequate in getting a Joe or Cobra onto a higher level. And what fun, uh, what ingenuity. But of course, sometimes you're dealing with even higher um, uh, distances. So what then? Well, you can put together a landing. <laughs> uh, and I'll show you how this worked. I've got a, an example right here. So the landing would slot in like that. And OK, so you'd have this, this landing here. Then you'd attach the second set of stairs slot it in, in behind. Come on, behave for the camera. Thank you. And then all of a sudden, ha, huh, you had a multiple landing staircase. And you could just keep doing this, basically crisscrossing your way all the way up. Uh, those of you who are wondering if this will stand on its own, well, you'll need something for it to attach to at the top there. But basically, this is a perfectly uh, perfectly practicable way for a character to, to traverse this space. Um, the design of the staircases was pretty rudimentary as well. Two pieces like that and a whole bunch of these <laughs> steps, which would then just slot in to the gaps. Did you used to do something similar? Let me know in the comments below. <laughs> but say you didn't want to go to that kind of effort. Well, why don't you just use the elevator? If you find a decent enough piece of polystyrene, perfect. What more could you ask for? Um. Let me know in the comments section if you know what reference that was to. <laughs> so large polystyrene pieces such as this have very important properties that we are about to investigate. They're very buoyant. They float extremely well. And can, in fact, have certain things riding atop them. Do you see where I'm going with this? Uh, Ta da! <sighs> Have I got your attention now? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the internet, feel free to take my ideas and run with them. It's only a matter of time before someone does it. It might as well be G.I. Joburg, right? Yep. Polystyrene, painted grey. If you buy boards, lay them on top of each other, you can shape them more uh, elegantly but this is just a quick demonstration of how in theory it works I mean I granted this isn't uh, the full load of a flag but it's riding super high out of the water and the plank is probably the heaviest component of this setup so do it and we're back what you see before you is a playset from the Storia's line by Tomy, uh, which 
was produced in the early 80s. And this thing keeps rearing its head uh, in Joe groups because it looks very, very much like the Cobra logo. I mean, it's a gigantic snake head. It has an opening jaw and a laser blaster in the mouth. Okay, so this is an incredible non-Joe but for use with Joe kind of toy because the, the imagery is just so strong. But on the outside, you've got a dropping ramp. Bam! Oh. Uh, and you can drive your Storia sort of uh, wheeled vehicles up that ramp and then put them inside. Also, the thing could do this. Okay, it can't do it anymore because I think the spring is shot. But basically, it would it would launch the snake portion uh, out of the front. And man, I should get yeah. Okay, there we go. Oh, the spring does work. Let's see if I can get this guy to do it. Here we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I guess it was designed as an a sort of escape portion to have the front section kind of roll off like that. But I mean, yeah, if you're a customizer of of any real ability this just screams potential at you i'm sure some kind of throne that that then moves uh i mean yeah it, it just imagine a serpentor or a cobra commander sitting at the base of this enormous snake mouth uh, that is just too cool for school we'll set that aside for now and take a look at the interior of this thing ha okay so now we're going to see the fact that it is set at a very very much smaller scale that said you can still have plenty of fun um it's got the same kind of feel as like a darth vader recuperation um pod to it i find say if uh, you know if you're down with the sunbow continuity and you believe that snake believe that snake believe that cobra commando was once a man and he needs to kind of uh i don't know revisit this chamber in order to to keep his his beast side from exposing itself again then this this turntable item in the middle uh, is perfect for that you just kind of like rotate him around a bit whoa is he gonna stand without a stand Mm, he, he held up pretty well, uh, but earlier G.I. Joe figures, you don't want to push their feet onto the uh, the battle stands from the 90s because those things are way too thick and you will crack your heels. But uh, I'm going to show you a few other features. Over here we've got a uh, sort of a manipulator arm, which is totally cracked on mine, destroyed in fact. Um, it does not bite down anymore. Uh, one of the, you know, the other side of the teeth is gone. Um, there's a drop down ramp. Boop. Mm. Oh, also quite tight. Once again, uh, your wheeled storiers can kind of disembark from that ramp. Uh, and then there's this cool area which I used to use with um, Mighty Max figures. It's like a shelf. Uh, so you can have adventures play out on this sort of upper deck, which is cool. Um, the top itself is very cool. A very detailed roof, the detachable Scorpion mini vehicle. How badass is that? All these purple um, accessories can come off, and many of them are interchangeable with, with other, other weapons ports. You can kind of swap them around. For instance, I can take one off the top and pop it there. Wahoo! Storia's was a great line of interchangeable parts, but I'm sure it was kind of lost in the shuffle of all the kind of Japanese imports hitting the United States at the same time. Uh, but I'm glad it came here because it meant my older brother could purchase them and I could get them as hand-me-downs. Thanks, Mark. But yeah, how cool is the sculpting on the top there? Very mecha. Very cool. But I think I've said all there is to say about this. Of course, scaling kind of got in the way. But with a winning bit of iconography like this, it always found itself as a pivotal location for the Cobra hierarchy. Um, which didn't happen often because I was a Joe guy back then. Uh, things have changed somewhat. <laughs> but this is a very, very cool piece. Track it down if you can. Uh, a lot of these pieces, in fact all, all three of these playsets are all hand-me-downs from my brother. They come from a bygone era. None of the classic G.I. Joe playsets found their way to South Africa while I was in the swing of collecting. Uh, so I had to make do with these hand-me-downs, but that's not to say they aren't cool. They certainly got a lot of play and, and fulfilled functions that 
you might find quite surprising, in fact. What isn't surprising is the fact that this toy was a space station. Mmm, second to none. This bad boy over here is a beautiful, beautiful piece uh, for use with uh, classic G.I. Joes. I think more modern era G.I. Joes would dwarf this thing quite easily, but Playmobil really, really did us a favor with this. It is stunning. You could call it a flying saucer or UFO, but it's it's meant to be manned by these little guys. Woo 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 woo. Uh, but just as easily, you could man it with these little guys. Uh, these ramps drop <laughs> off. <laughs> Let's try the other one. Okay, this one's a little bit sturdier. And you can have Countdown board it. There is a... It's all falling apart, sadly. There's an airlock system that he can enter into. The interior is just filled with awesome details. Something that we so seldom saw in G.I. Joe vehicles or any vehicles of the scale are sleeping arrangements. Places where figures could be accommodated. And these bunks accommodate a classic G.I. Joe three and three quarter inch figure all too well. Unfortunately, what isn't <laughs> very accommodating are the seating inside this space station. And there are an abundance of seats, all of which are sadly just too small, tantalizingly too small for G.I. Joe to occupy. But why would you want your astronaut Joes to be sitting down anyway? This basically is a staging area for your guys to get their gear on and head out to do battle intergalactic warfare, if you will. I used to always think that this piece was a sandwich press because basically I was raised on toasted cheese and ham as a child. <laughs> the decals are top notch. I love each and every one of these and they all are unique and all seem to have a very evocative display. It's total petrol for the flames of a youngster's imagination. Like this one, wow. The line work on it is so detailed at this scale. Really, really impressive for a line that I think many people, uh, particularly of our generation, would shun as being more basic, dumbed down child's toys. Playmobil is impressive stuff, and it was impressive right the way through from the early days. Each one of these portholes has its own glass. Wow. <laughs> and as you can see, I've lost about as many as I've retained. And that brings us to the third and final playset under consideration. What? Only three? No Ewok village? Well, I blame third world poverty. <laughs> the third and final playset, once again a hand-me-down, occupies the top spot for a very important reason. Maybe it'll become self-evident when you see it. But it is none other than the... Astro Station. From Micronauts. What is it? What is it? It's a box with boosters. But it is most definitely for use with a three and three quarter inch G.I. Joe style action figure. That's important. But more importantly than that, what happens when I do this? There are two seats in there, right? Okay. You could, because of its modular design, increase that to four seats. And forgive me, these seats are uh, all snapped. They've all seen better days. But they could be inserted into the holes in the cockpit. And all of a sudden, you've got a four-seater cockpit diorama, which makes it similar to the stock standard static shot in Star Wars. The Millennium Falcon interior shot. Say it was a rainy day. Say you were housebound. Say you couldn't play with your Joes in the garden. If you wanted to take them on interstellar adventures, you need only have this environment. This represents the cockpit of the Falcon or any other kind of fantastical spaceship that your imagination could produce. So you could populate it with your key personnel and take them anywhere they wanted to go. You wouldn't have to build any other excessive sets or creations or equipment. You wouldn't have to have any other toys. But this and your four best Joes. 
it is magnificent in that respect and so very very important this could form the cockpit to an enormous star cruiser built up of gray painted pieces of polystyrene like we had earlier on in this video or it could be a standalone small craft used for infiltration secret missions like smuggling or getting the plans to the princess uh, the toy itself had a few features all of them pretty much had broken by the time i got round to it there was a side panel that flipped down which could eject a figure apparently at uh, at some speed there was a capsule that occupied the center which you could use i don't know for a burial in space <laughs> put a figure in there uh, it came, I think, with a figure, or this came, it was a separate figure. I mean, by the time I inherited this stuff, all the paraphernalia was long gone. So I, I had guesswork as to, and my brother's memory, which wasn't terribly reliable at that point, uh, to find out who the hell this guy was and where he belonged. But he was very easily your stand-in C-3PO. You know, he's spindly, he's metal, uh, he looks like a nerd. <laughs> What does a nerd look like, uh, this guy? Um, but he was a perfect stand-in for C-3PO, as I say, with that skeletal look about him. And the weight is just so cool. Oi, he looks like a zombie robot now. But he stands! Huh, I did not expect that. What am I talking about? I'm an expert poser. The uh, toy itself, as I say, could seat your key personnel. Countdown was always a, a firm favorite. And off they went. Whether it was Countdown and the Secret Wars Doctor Doom, or Countdown and Chewbacca, uh, or any, any number of scrappy figures that I lay my hands on, this was the scene of much, much fun. Because it's incredible what you can achieve, what your imagination can achieve uh, within limitations. The stricter the limitations, the more evocative the imagination. And this toy unlocked that for me. I thank you for coming on this adventure with me, guys. It's been nostalgic. Uh, uh, if this has gotten you nostalgic at all, please let me know in the comments section what playsets you used. Did you have them all? Did you have the G.I. Joe HQ? Did you have uh, uh, the MCC or the flag? Well, those toys were, of course, a complete myth to me back then. But I had these, and I'd say I was better for it. Uh, this really did increase my appreciation um, in casting the net far and wide when it came to playsets. Nothing was without potential. Um, and, and, I, and I absolutely adore these toys for, for getting me off to the right start. And circling back to our GoFundMe, guys, um, I might consider extending the deadline. Uh, I'll be going live this evening, Sunday the 27th, in order to announce the options. Be sure to check that out. It's 12 midnight C80, which is Central African time, on Monday the 28th, which means that it will probably be 6 p.m. on the East Coast and 3 p.m. on the West Coast. <laughs> I hope that helps. I hope this video gets published in time. Uh, and I hope you all have a fantastic evening, afternoon, day, morning, whatever time you happen to be watching this. This is Steve from G.I. Joburg. One love, guys. Please be sure to have a say on what we do next on this channel, uh, what adventures we take these things on. We could feature these toys. It might be an option in our secret ballots. But you have to pledge $5 or more to our GoFundMe in order to secure a vote. So, what are you waiting for? Yo, Joe! Berg. <laughs>